Hey guys, this is T from Driftwood Gaming and I'm back with another tutorial for Effects here. This is chapter 9 and it's called Let's Create a Muzzle Flash. So first I'm going to skim through the tutorial on the website to kind of overview what they're saying, but then I'm going to use an illustration to try and explain it a little better. So it breaks it down in three different components or, or sections. One is flash, one is spark, and one is smoke. And for this we're not going to build it from the ground up because there are a lot of things we've already covered. If you don't understand what this is made out of up to this point, I suggest you look at the earlier tutorials that I've done. But moving on, we're going to talk about the flash first. And it talks about the orientation in this section. And to be honest, this took me a while to wrap my head around, but I, I think I finally have it in a way that I can explain to everybody. I understood it, but not well enough to explain it to everybody. So anyways, what it's explaining is that it's using the XYZ axis and it, it's going to use a parent node in order to set the, the child node of the effects that will later come from it, which are down here. Um, but so at, at first when you set everything up, it's it's flat on the uh, this level plane, the 2D plane, X, Y. And then you also have the Z plane. And the effect is then lifted with rotation and the Z plane then changes its orientation as does the X and the Y. So what it's explaining is that this is expanding here, the central image on the X and the Y. And uh, this talks about how the sparks, when you generate them, it's going to be along this circle that the X and the Y expansion will create. And you want to make sure that they're facing on the right, facing the right direction in this circle. So I'm going to show you a little illustration that I drew in order to explain this a little bit better. Here is a representation of two, just want to say by the way, I'm trying to explain a 3D perspective on a 2D drawing so it has its limitations, but uh, this is 2D. You have a, a Y axis and an X axis and literally it's just Y goes up and down and X goes side to side. That's your 2D plane. And if you go to a 3D plane you still have a Y axis and an X axis, but think of it more like it's on a flat flat table and then you also have a Z axis. And imagine if you had a lamp on that table, the lamp would be traveling the direction of the Z axis and the table's width would be the, the X axis and the length would be the Y axis. So now in order to understand how a parent can affect the child trajectory, imagine a bottle cap on a table. And here you have the X, or the X and the Y is the flat surface of the table, the length and the width, and the Z is going straight up. Now say you take that same cap and you lift it on its edge, you stand it on its edge. So now the X and the Y surface is actually the, 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 the bottom of the cap and the top of the cap, the, the circle that you see or the inside of the cylinder is the Y and the X axis. And then from the zero point, wherever that is, wherever the anchor point, point is, out, in the previous up direction is the Z axis positive. You can also go Z negative and go, go behind the bottle cap, but for these, this purpose we're just going to talk about a positive Z axis. So hopefully this helps you to visualize what we're doing a little better. Let's go back on to the tutorial. And so what we're going to do is plug these numbers into the sample that they give you so we can watch this in action. Okay, so let's watch this effect play. You see that it's not quite set up yet, so we're going to punch in these numbers that we have on the tutorial here. Our spawn count is 16. Time to live is 30. The spawn rate is 0.1, and the rotation method is PVA, so let's change that. And the angle is going to be on the x-axis, 55, and that's like picking the, the bottle cap up on the table, laying it on its side, almost. You could see that the orientation changes. Actually, I'm going to zoom out so you can see that a little better. There we go. Okay, and the deviation will be 10, and set angle on spawn is on, so this is in the spawning method, and then the spawning method is going to be a circle. The vertices are 32, and the radius is 0.5. Now you can see that the spark animation looks about right. Let's move on to the smoke. So the smoke is pretty simple actually, there's not much to it that you haven't learned yet, but an interesting part that I really like is that we're learning how to use sprite sheets and effects here. So let's go to the smoke 
node and right now it's invisible so we're going to make it visible and we're on the basic renders settings page and here you're going to change UV from standard to animation and then it gives you a whole lot of other options that you can change and we're going to change the size to 256 by 256 the frame length is going to be 10 and the X count is 2 and the Y count is 2. Now the reason why the X count and the Y count are 2 is because of the configuration of the sprite sheet. So if you look up at the sprite sheet you see that it has two X rows and two Y rows. That way it knows how to read it. So let's play our animation. We should actually be done. Next up I'll be doing chapter 10 in the Effect Seer tutorial series. Until then, bye! If you like this video, subscribe to the YouTube channel and hit the notification bell. Please like this video, subscribe to the notification bell, and... <laughs> <laughs>